2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. That can be a hard pill to swallow when you really can't see your way through. I'm so honored to be able to share with you uh, and because I stand on the on the shoulders of some giants of our people that have walked by faith, that have demonstrated. Dr. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Mega Evers. I mean, we, the list can go on and on. The pronoun we really stands out to me this, this month. For we walk by faith and not by sight. As I share scriptures throughout this month that shared light on our path for us to get through some dark times, it made me feel really, really good that I could celebrate the giants that were victorious fighting this battle that really wasn't theirs. This battle was the Lord. We walk by faith. Let's take a look deeper into God's word to see what he has to say about this victorious walk with him. What shall we then say to these things? This is a question. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Another question, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, our Lord. Wow. This was what I consider tonight the big finale or the big question. And the big question in this verse is what shall we then say to these things? What shall we then say to these things? All of the passage of scriptures that you heard throughout this week, the Lord is my light, and that becomes my salvation. The battle is not ours, but the Lord. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. All of those passages of scripture were just God's light shine in our dark situation. And now the question is asked tonight, what shall we then say to these things? As we wrap up this month of celebration of black history, that's a, that's, a, that's a big time question. What shall we then say to these things? A lot of times we look at that as a statement, but this is a question. And here it is, the question or the suggested question. If God be for us, who can be against us? Is that what we should say to these things? Looking back over our lives at, and looking back over our the journey for our people. You look back over it and you say, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Is that our response? Is that your response? Is that your response to all the things that we've gone through? And then he goes to qualify because this battle is bigger than just the racism we face the injustices we face, uh, uh, the, the, the tribulations, the trial uh, is bigger than a color. It's bigger than this race versus that race. It's bigger than that. Because what God does is bring his son into the picture. 
He said he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for not just a certain group of people, but he delivered him up for us all. Now, if God didn't spare his son, but delivered him up for us so that we can escape eternal damnation, I believe God is really for us. I believe God is really for us. He said, and he has freely given us all things. So he asked the question, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? We are the elect of God. We are the elect of God. God justifies in the midst of injustice, God justified. Uh, listen to Dr. King speak. He made the statement. He said, it really don't matter no more. <laughs> it really don't matter no more. He said, I've seen the promised land, right? When we walk in by faith, we see something deeper. We see something far beyond what we're going through. That's how we get through it. That's how we got through it. That's how we got through it. That's how we will get through it. Lift every voice and say, it talks about what the dark past has taught us. It gets us through some things now, right? The Lord is my light now. The Lord brings us understanding now. Christ died for us. Not only did he die for us, what qualified his death being accepted, he was risen again. Which means God accepted the sacrifice on our behalf. And God has justified us in raising him from the dead. So he goes on to ask more big questions in this finale. He says, who shall separate us? Who shall separate us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I wish you could really hear those pronouns. We and us. We're part of the us. Early in Romans 8, 28, he says that we know that all things, we know that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord. And listen to this, who are the called according to his purpose. Everything that we've gone through as a people, this is the way I'm taking it. Everything that we've gone through as a people, I'm putting it on purpose. We are the called according to his purpose. Black, white, Hispanic, African, European, none doesn't matter. When you're called according to his purpose, things work together for your good and for God's glory. Because you are the call. And we are on purpose right now. We have been brought to America on purpose. Not intentionally, but on purpose. There's purpose to our lives. There's purpose to why we got through when nobody else was for us. Nobody had hair like ours. Nobody had skin like ours. We were just different. We were unique and we were brought over here on purpose. On purpose, he brought us over here. He says, so nothing can separate us. He asked the question, Boldly, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You got to know, beloved, that Christ's love is there for you. The love of Christ, no one can separate us from that. Dogs biting us can't separate us from the love of Christ. Because a dog is biting me, that does not mean the love of Christ is not there for me. The love of Christ is there for me. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, might I add now, slavery, not having the right to vote, injustices? He said, nay, none of that. Shall nakedness, peril or sword? He said, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. In other words, we're, we're already accounted like sheep. Our life is hid with Christ and God because we're here on purpose. So he concludes, nay or nah. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. How? Through him that loved us. Through him that loved us. He said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature. King James Version. 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Oh, well, let's take ownership. Let's take ownership. Let's take ownership of something much bigger, the love of Christ, the love of God. That's what's sustaining us. That's what's getting us through this. Yes, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, we are cast down, but we are not destroyed because the love of Christ, the love of Christ is what keeps us going. I'm glad he loves me. And I'm glad the love of Christ, which was displayed out on Calvary, is there for all of us to redeem us, to reclaim us, to save us, to help us, to deliver us. I'm glad I'm part of us. So to answer that question, the finale question tonight, what shall we then say to these things? What's your response? What shall we then say to these things? That's a question. And then he follows it up with a question. Should we say, if God be for us, who can be against us? <laughs> well, looking back at our track record and how we got out, it's safe to say that God has been for us all the time. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I just pray that you embrace the love of Christ. I know it's been some indifference. I know things are tough and I know things are unfair at times, but put it on purpose, God's purpose. And know that in all these things, you and I, us, we are more than conquerors. God bless you.